Do you have a solid union job? If so, you may be plagued by decent wages and good benefits. You may experience chest pains of sadness, knowing you have a secure retirement. Or you may suffer severe spasms due to your paid leave and sick days. But don't worry, Anti-Union All can help. From the makers of Retire Not and Wage Be Gone, Anti-Union All is a revolutionary new drug that drastically reduces economic equality and a strong middle class. Its time-released effects ensure that the 1% continue to take in a greater share of the nation's wealth, and it prevents you from joining in that prosperity. More CEOs and billionaires prescribe Anti-Union All to their employees than any other form of medication. Anti-Union All is not for everyone, including pregnant women, people with families if you have a pre-existing mortgage or if you suffer from student debt. Side effects include lower wages, an insecure retirement, and no paid leave. Acute symptoms such as an unfair economy and less economic opportunity will occur. Your bank account may also be affected by a rare but serious condition called low account balance syndrome. This may be a sign of a dangerous fiscal situation. Talk to your boss about Anti-Union All and see if it's right for you. It's your future. Choose Anti-Union All today. To learn more, visit antiunionall.com. The next door house, our house, the house across the street, the house three doors down, and the house around the corner were all in foreclosure. All of them. Tomorrow, they're going to auction off my house, my five acres here. I'm scared about my situation right now, but I'm also scared about Gerald's situation as he gets older. Come on, kitty, kitty. Come on. I got to be here to protect him or make his life as comfortable as I can. Like, we're going to have to put all of our stuff in storage and then, um, live with my mom again. I'm 26, live with my mom again. I never thought you I'd never... be getting help from the state, you know? No, I never thought I told myself I would never do that. I, I would never do that. Stamps. I never put that in my head. I walked into the house, and she was sitting in the kitchen in the dark, and I was like, Mom, what's wrong? And, like, she was crying because she just didn't know what she was going to do for food for the next couple of uh, weeks. I don't need a freaking hot meal. You have school tomorrow. And I can have- I don't want you to go to sleep with an empty belly. I hear them in bed sometimes saying, we skip dinner because we need to feed our kids. Sometimes when I hear that, I cry sometimes. For the middle class in this country, we have a one strike and you're out economy. The system that once was in place to cushion those crises has been frayed. The most endangered species in America is the middle class family. And I think we have to be alarmed by that and ask whether, whether that is good policy. So it's going to be a little rough the next couple days. I'm going to be staying at the shelter I don't know the name of. People asked me where I li lived at school, but I just s said I lived in the s same place or m by that place, so like they wouldn't like make fun because m my school is very like judgmental. They'll make f fun of you if you live somewhere that isn't regular or normal. This is where we're at. Is people really looking for a safety net that's frayed well beyond what I think most people think? I've got doctor bills like every day in the mail. I got a $49,000 bill. I just feel like it's all my fault that you have to pay me so much money. Honey, it's not your fault. You're a kid. Be a kid. Doesn't everything always work out? No. I think people still believe in the American dream and want the American dream. I think there's more and more people who are being denied it by the growing income inequality. And they're saying, I work hard. I play by the rules. I see corporate profits going through the roof. And I can't get ahead. We used to talk about like what we were going to do with our life and our dreams and what we wanted for the kids. And all we talk about now is money. Forget the dreams. How do we make it to tomorrow? Right. Tomorrow's the dream. This dinner is the dream. You can turn the lights on, turn the water on. That's a dream. Helping a poor family isn't an act of charity. It's converting a family that you have to support into a family that can buy things from your company. It's not easy. You're a 50-year-old man, and you have to call your dad to pay the electric bill. 
We've always been a nation that would look out for those that needed help. And for the life of me, I don't understand the response that would say, uh, no, fend for yourself. And that's not rooted in the fabric of America. I don't want to have like a mansion or anything, and like stacks of money like sitting right next to me. I want to have like just a normal house, maybe a dog, maybe two kids. I prefer one. Uh, that's the American dream, right? To have, to not be able, not have to worry about money. That's that's every kid. Like if every kid could say that, then the, you know, it's just awesome. That'd be awesome. Once upon a time, America had policies which promoted a strong middle class. Can we insist that we that we protect families in this country, and that we have policies that make sure we're investing in in, in healthy outcomes for them? I want to go to college, I want to be able to have a good life. And it makes me worry, like, how am I going to be successful? And how am I going to be, be able to provide for my family? I worry about that every day. Why do we seek each other out? Why do we need to play together? Laugh together? Tell our stories to each other? Challenge and believe in each other? Making connections gives us meaning. We discover who we are and become something bigger than ourselves. We are and have always been stronger together.